Now, uh, then we were looking at uh, some general representations of uh, linear circuits which can be used uh, more widely. Okay, so we were in the middle of uh, sort of generating an equivalent circuit for a complicated circuit. Okay, so in the meanwhile, if you have any questions about what we did in the previous class or uh, anything before that, please go ahead. Any questions about things we were discussing in the previous class? Okay, so let me get back to what we were doing. Now, what we were looking to do was to take a circuit of this sort which consists of uh, linear elements and uh, linear control sources which are controlled by quantities inside. This is this network N. And then uh, it is loaded by a current source IX, which could be a current source, or it could be the equivalent of any other load or complicated network that is connected. We know from substitution theorem that if we had some other network here, uh, we could replace it, replace it by the current, current source that it is drawing. Okay? So now uh, what we did was, uh, this is a linear network, so superposition applies, and we can analyze this uh, in uh, two steps, okay, which is what I have shown here. Let me copy this stuff over. So, I will do a two step analysis of this. Uh, I have a number of uh, independent sources inside and I also have this independent current source IX which could be a current source uh, or it could be a substitution for some other element so some other load. Okay. So first I will deactivate the uh, current source that is I will set IX equal to 0 and analyze this circuit that is at these terminals 1 1 prime I will find the voltage VH1. Okay. Next, I will set all the sources inside, all the independent sources inside to 0. So, that is known as nulling the circuit. Then, uh, I will analyze the circuit with Ix alone. Okay, So, Ix is active in this case. So, clearly by superposition, in uh, this case when everything is acting, that is when you have the load uh, that is represented by Ix, plus when you have all the independent sources inside the circuit, you will get a certain value of Vx. And this Vx, which is the solution you are looking for, is nothing but Vx1 plus Vx2. Okay? What you calculate from uh, this step by setting this Ix to 0, and then this step by setting all the independent sources in the circuit to 0, and uh, that is nulling the circuit and finding the voltage. Okay? Is this part clear? A splitting of the circuit like this? Any questions about splitting of the circuit in this uh, manner? That is, first I will uh, 
activate all the current sources inside, deactivate this IX, then uh, uh, I will null uh, the circuit and have only IX active. Okay, so let me just imagine that I have only one source inside, okay? And one independent source outside which is IX. So clearly by superposition What is the meaning of superposition? If you have a number of uh, independent sources in a circuit, we can, and then let's say you want to find a certain uh, quantity, let's say this Vx, okay, at these terminals, 1, 1 prime, then uh, what you can do is analyze the circuit with each independent source activated at a time, okay. So if you have a number of independent sources, you set all the independent sources to zero except one of them, you find the value of Vx from that one. And next, you take the next source and set uh, that one to a non-zero value and everything else to zero. Then find the Vx from that. Do this for all independent sources. You will get a number of different values of Vx. And you add all of them up. That will be the uh, value of Vx with all the sources active. Okay? So now, uh, you don't have to do it one by one. Let's say you had the five independent sources. You could take three of them once and then two of them the other time or four of them once and one of them the other time and so on. Okay. So here uh, what I will do is I will first deactivate this IX which corresponds to the load which can be substitute, substituting for the load and find this voltage and then I will null everything else that is I null the circuit and find the value of VX2 from this. Okay. I hope that is clear. Now, now one of the questions is that is it possible to find the current instead of the voltage? Yeah, it is very much possible. Okay. It's not a problem at all. Later, uh, uh, you will see that. Okay, first of all, let me call this Vx, and then there is certain branch, and then that is I Y or something. Okay. Now. Uh, if this circuit is linear, then uh, this Vx and Iy, any, any of these quantities can be found from superposition. Okay, that is any branch voltage or any branch current can be found from superposition. Okay, so that applies to any quantity that you would like to find. Now, let me look at the first part of this, that is Vx1. Now, you see that Vx1 is nothing but uh, the voltage that appears across 1 1 prime when it is open circuited. Okay? It's the open circuit voltage or the voltage that appears across 1 1 prime when it is externally open circuited. Okay. That is no load is connected. Okay. That is the idea. Okay, so one part of this is the open circuit voltage. Now remember what we are trying to do is 
we have a very complicated circuit and only these terminals 1 1 prime are accessible to us and this may be connected to yet another circuit now what we would like to do is to have instead of uh, analyzing this complicated circuit n every time we would like an equivalent representation of n that is simple okay so that's our goal that's what we are driving at because uh, if you are not interested in the internal details of n we have only this 1 1 prime and this will be driving the other circuit so we are only interested in what happens to this terminals 1 1 prime and in the other circuit we don't need to uh, analyze all of n every time okay that's the idea now that is the first piece of the puzzle the open circuit voltage Now the next part is with n being null that is all uh, independent sources inside n are set to zero okay and we have only a single independent source in the circuit we have a single independent source ix in the circuit okay so now uh, we will have this vx2 so my question is please try to answer this what is the general form of uh, vx2 what is the general form of vx2 that is we are now talking about a circuit which has only linear components and all the independent sources are set to zero so we have a single independent source ix what i would like you to uh, answer is what will be the general form of vx2 okay in, in uh, meaning uh, how would it be related to ix Yeah, I think many of you are able to answer it. Vx2 will be proportional to Ix, and with the polarity is given, it will be of the form minus Ix times some R. Okay, where R is a property of this circuit. R is basically the resistance looking into the terminals 1 1 prime. Okay, because we have a single independent source here Ix, and then all the other sources are nulled and all the other components are linear so every quantity in this every branch voltage and current will be just proportional to ix and that will apply to vx2 also okay and uh, with the sign that i have taken okay because the ix is flowing outwards i will say vx2 is minus ix times r okay because the passive sign convention 1 1 prime if ix would be flowing that way then i would uh, so same if i were uh, flowing that way i would take v in that polarity in this case i and v are in the opposite uh, polarity to this convention so i will say it is minus ix r okay and what is this r it is the resistance I will say looking into 1 1 prime with all independent sources set to 0. Okay. So that is the resistance of uh, uh, 
the network and looking into the terminals one one point. Okay. And this voltage VX1 is the open circuit voltage. I could also call it VOC. Okay. Or uh, let me call it VT. It's okay. The reason for this will become clear. The open circuit voltage is called VTH. What I do is I simply measure the uh, voltage across 1 1 prime with nothing connected to 1 1 prime. Okay. And this R, I will call this RTH. Again, the region will become very clear. Okay. So now, So this uh, quantity is called what I called uh, VTH, okay? The open circuit voltage, and then here this quantity will be minus I X RTH, where RTH is the resistance looking into. 1 1 prime. So the total voltage Vx will be equal to Vth minus Ix Rth. Okay. Where Vth is the open circuit voltage and the Rth is the resistance looking into 1 1 prime with uh, all the independent sources set to 0. Okay. So this is the voltage that will be present when this uh, network is connected to a load current of Ix. Okay. So this is Vx in the complete circuit. Now the uh, network is active and the load current is connected to it. This Ix. Okay. Now because Vx is in this form, it's very easy to see that this can be generated by having a voltage source Vth and a resistance Rth in series with it. So if I connect a resistance Ix the current source Ix here, you will very easily see that all of this Ix will flow through RTH. So the voltage drop across this is Ix RTH. Okay. And the voltage between these two terminals will be Vth minus Ix RTH. Okay. So the voltage here will be exactly the same as that one. Okay. So this entire thing here Uh, this is terminal 1 1 prime. The whatever is inside this red box is equivalent to the original complicated circuit N between the terminals 1 1 prime. Okay, so it's only that that is equivalent. Internal details of this we don't know. The internally here we have only a single voltage source and a single resistance. But as far as the terminals 1 1 prime are concerned, the voltage across this and the current through this will be exactly same as in the original network N. Okay. Now this is regardless of what is connected to it because we didn't make any assumptions about Ix. Okay. So Ix is some current which could be a current source or which could be a substitution for uh, some other load. But whatever it is, uh, this entire thing which is a set of independent sources and linear elements can be replaced by a voltage source Vth in series with the resistance Rth. And this uh, particular representation, probably many, some of you know this already, this is known as 
the Thevenin circuit or the Thevenin equivalent circuit of this part. Okay. So now, uh, as I said earlier, if you are not interested in the internal details of this, so let's say you design a very complicated circuit with uh, hundreds of resistors and control sources and uh, many independent sources, and you want somebody else to use it, but you have only two terminals that are brought out, uh, which is what they are going to use. So in that case, they don't need to know all the internal details of this. All you have to do is to give the Thevenin equivalent. You give the value of VTH and RTH. Because you know the internal details, you can calculate these things. But once this is done, as far as the terminals 1, 1 prime are concerned, this very simple representation and whatever stuff you have inside this are completely equivalent. Okay? And this, uh, uh, the idea that uh, any circuit can be uh, reduced to this is known as Thevenin's theorem. Okay, so any questions about this? What we did was we just used linearity of uh, the circuit N and proved that it can be represented by a voltage source in series with the resistance. Okay, essentially we proved what is known as Thevenin's theorem. Okay, so any questions about the proof or the idea of uh, Thevenin's theorem? There is a question on uh, when we cascade two networks, is there any chance to change the voltage between the two networks? Actually, this question is not clear to me which voltage or uh, what is being referred to. Okay, so I have to either draw a figure and email it to me, then I will discuss that. Okay, so I'm not clear about what is meant by cascading of two networks and what is the voltage between the two networks. So any other questions about this, Thevenin's uh, theorem and its proof? So actually the uh, proof is uh, quite simple, all we used was linearity, okay? And any questions that you have, if you want to send something in detail, please use the forum, discussion forum for uh, given for this course, okay? On the NPTEL website. Okay.
So the voltage VTH is the open circuit voltage across the two terminals and RTH is resistance between the two terminals. So looking into the two terminals with independent voltage sources null. Okay. It appeared that uh, because of some uh, network problem, uh, the connection broke and also the audio and video went away for a while. Mm -hmm. I hope it is solved now. Are you able to hear me? If uh, there is no audio, then again let me know.
Okay. So as I repeat what I had said, I was just saying that Tavernin's theorem says that if you have a two terminal network with independent sources and linear elements inside, at the two terminals it can be equivalently represented by a series combination of a voltage source and a resistance. The voltage source is formed by determining the voltage across the two terminals with nothing connected to them and the resistance is formed by nulling all the independent sources in the network and finding the resistance looking into the two terminals. Okay, so as I said we will work out an example and the example circuit I took was this very simple circuit. I have a 10 volt source, a 3 kilo ohm resistor and series with 7 kilo ohms and these are the two terminals at which I want to find the Thevenin equivalent. This is very important. I mean what is equivalent when you say it's the Thevenin equivalent of a circuit. The Thevenin uh, equivalent applies only to some two terminals specified. In this case it's this 1 and 1 prime. Okay. So now uh, my question is what will be the Thevenin voltage across 1 1 prime in this circuit. Please try to answer this. Okay, I think all of you are able to immediately recognize that it is this resistive divider 7 kilo ohm divided by 7 plus 3 kilo ohms times 10 volts. So it is 7 volts. That is the right answer. Okay. So again there are some complaints that uh, audio is not okay. But it seems that many other people are able to hear. So the problem may be with your uh, setup. You please try it again. Okay. So now the next thing is what is the value of RDH? What is the value of RDH looking into these terminals? Again what you should do is you should take the independent circuit, independent voltage source in this circuit, make it zero and find the resistance looking back into the circuit. Okay. So I have to make this 0 volts or a short circuit and I have to look at the resistance here. Again the answer is uh, very simple. This is a short circuit and you will be able to easily see that the 3 kilo ohm and 7 kilo ohm are in parallel. So The answer is 2.1 kilo. Again, I got some answers like 2.1 and so on. Please don't do this. Uh, always specify the units for any quantity that has dimensions. Okay. Now somebody said 7k parallel 3k. That is correct. So I was looking for the numerical value. Okay. So what it means is that This entire circuit can be replaced by 
7 volt voltage source in series with a 2.1 kilo ohm resistance. Okay? Is this part clear? So now let me make the circuit more complicated. I will add a 10 milliamp current source as shown in red. Okay. So now uh, we have to find the now of course according to Thevenin's theorem at 1 1 prime. Oh by the way, I should have marked the terminals here. This is 1 and 1 prime. Uh, at 1 1 prime, I can represent this new circuit also with a single single voltage source and a resistance. Okay. Now my first question is, what will be the value of the resistance in this new circuit? What is the value of RTH? Yeah. Again, as uh, many of you are able to recognize, it's exactly the same because when you null the voltage and the current source, you short circuit this and you open circuit the current source, you are left with exactly what you had before. So the value of RTH doesn't change at all. Okay. Now what will be the value of VTH, the thevenin voltage source, what is the value going to be? What will be the value of the VTH, voltage, uh, voltage source VTH? With the new, uh, with the current source added, okay, what is the value of VTH? So we already see there are many ways of doing it. You can redo the circuit analysis with the voltage and the current source together. You can also use superposition here to calculate VTH as well because after all it's a linear circuit with independent sources. And superposition means you have to find the voltage VTH due to 10 volts and the voltage VTH due to the 10 milliamp current source. The voltage due to 10 volts you have already found previously. Okay. So the only thing you have to do is to find the voltage due to the 10 milliamp current source and add it to the voltage due to the 10 volt voltage source. Okay. So the question is about the VTH value with this new circuit which has the 10 volt voltage source, 10 milliamp current source and the two resistors. Okay. And I have also given some choices. So please do the calculation and let me know what the uh, voltage value VTH is.
can either indicate it on the poll or just give me the value. Okay, I think again, uh, uh, many of you are able to do it correctly, although one person said zero words, I'm not sure why that's the case. Uh, so let me do it and show it, although this also is quite simple. I will do this with uh, superposition, which means that first I will set the 10 milliamp source to zero, which is an open circuit. And then I will set the 10 volt source to 0, which is a short circuit. Okay. Now, this one we have already done before. So, I am simply going to write down the answer. So, the answer here is 7 volts. And this other one, you should be able to see that this uh, 3 kilo ohm and 7 kilo ohm are in parallel. And they are in parallel across this current source. Okay. So we have an equivalent picture like this. This is the 10 milliamp current source and this is 3 kilo ohm and 7 kilo ohm in parallel which is 2.1 kilo ohm. Okay. Now by the way this is uh, 1 and 1 prime. So the voltage across this from 1 to 1 prime that is with V being 1 being positive is minus 10 milliamps times 2.1 kilo ohms because of this polarity of the 10 milliamp current source. So, 10 milliamp is being drawn like this. So, this voltage is minus 10 milliamp times 2.1 kilo ohm, which is minus 21 volts. Okay. So, again, if you have got uh, some different answers, please uh, uh, look, at, uh, look at this and then uh, figure out where you have gone wrong. So, the total voltage is the sum of this due to 10 volt source and this due to the 10 milliamp source. So, clearly minus 21 plus 7 is minus 14 volts and this is the correct answer. Okay. So, with the current source added, what we have is minus 21 volts and sorry, minus uh, 14 volts and 2.1 kilo ohm in series. Okay, one, one point. So, what I tried to demonstrate is that uh, even if you make the circuit more complicated, you can represent it equivalently. Okay, now this will be the equivalent circuit regardless of what you connect to one and one prime. Okay, this hopefully uh, 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 you understood this point that I connected some IX here and that IX can be either a current source or a representation for any kind of load. So, whatever you connect between 1 and 1 prime that does not matter. This part what we are replacing is this part here that can be re represented by this minus 14 volts and 2.1 kilo ohms in series. In fact, what you connect to this can be nonlinear. The part that we are converting to thermodynamic equivalent that has to have only linear elements and uh, uh, linear elements and independent voltage and current sources. Okay. Now there is a question about the polarity of the current source. I think you got the answer right. Anyway, so what I'm saying is that if you have a current like this, and then you have a resistance. Okay. So, the voltage measured with this polarity will be minus I times R. Okay. So, if the current was flowing like that, if the current I is flowing like that, the voltage in this polarity will be IR. Okay. 
Now, if the current is in the opposite direction, which it is, if i is like that, it will be minus i r. That's all I said. Okay? Is that clear? Okay. So, now, uh, just for, uh, we'll take it just a small step further. Okay? Let me add another resistance like this, which is 1.9 kilo ohms. Okay, I'll take some value. And again, at 1, 1 prime, I have to find VTH and RTH. Okay. Now, please tell me, how will uh, VTH and RTH change? For this new circuit with this 1.9 kilo ohm resistance, what will be the value of VTH? Previously, when we didn't have this, this was the value of VTH. Okay. So, what is the value of VTH when we have that 1.9 kilo ohms? So, I think many of you recognize that VTH will be the same because when this is open circuited, that is how you find VTH. The 1.9 kilo ohm is floating and no current is flowing through it. So, whatever voltage appears here will be the same as or what appears there. Okay. So, this is a special case with the way I have connected this 1.9 kilo ohms. But when I open circuit this, no current is flowing through that. So, whether you have this 1.9 kilo ohm or not, you will get the same voltage. Okay, what will be the value of RTH? So again, this is uh, simple because we have the 3 kilo ohm and 7 kilo ohm in series. Okay, and this 1.9 kilo ohm like that. So we know that looking here between these terminals, we had 2.1 kilo ohms, and this 1.9 kilo ohm is simply in series with that. So looking this way, it is 4 kilo ohm. That is 2.1 plus 1.9. Okay. So the equivalent circuit for this, including that, would be minus 14 volts and 4 kilo ohms. Okay? So, this is just to illustrate the point that you can make the circuits more complicated, but the representation can remain exactly the same and you can find the representation. Okay? Now, this circuit is still too simple. Even if you had 100 resistors and then uh, control sources and so on, you can still find the uh, there are an equivalent circuit. Okay. So, any questions so far on any of these calculations or proof of Thevenin's theorem? Okay, so that seems uh, pretty clear.
Now, uh, there is another theorem which I will not prove. You can try to prove it uh, yourself by following analogous methods. And if you get stuck somewhere, you can ask me later. So, instead of using a voltage source and a resistance in series, okay, any uh, network of the same type, any network with uh, linear elements uh, and independent sources can be uh, represented by a current source IN and a resistance RN in parallel. Okay? So, instead of a voltage source VTH and a resistance RTH in series, we can represent the same by a current source IN and a resistance RN in parallel. Okay? So, now it turns out that this IN is now what is known as the short circuit current and this RN is what is known as the Norton resistance. Okay? So, we have the short circuit current and the Norton resistance. Now, what is the short circuit current? The short circuit current is you take this term as 1 1 prime, short circuit it and measure the current. Okay? So, you short circuit this one and measure the current flowing from 1 to 1 prime. That is the short circuit current IN. Okay? And RN is the same as the resistance looking into this circuit with all the independent sources nulled, which will be the same as RDH. Okay? So, the Norton equivalent, the resistance in the Norton equivalent circuit and the Thevenin equivalent circuit will be exactly the same because they are nothing but the resistance looking into the circuit N with uh, all the independent sources set to 0. And this IM is the short circuit current that is when you have short circuit 1 1 prime you will have a current IM and this VTH is the open circuit voltage that is if you have uh, uh, an open circuit across 1 1 then the voltage that appears at 1 1 is VTH. Okay? Now, this IN is of course related to VTH in a very simple way and a very easy way to see that is first of all, this is the not an equivalent circuit of this and this is the Thevenin equivalent circuit of the same circuit. So, clearly these two also have to be equivalent to each other and if you look at the open circuit voltage between 1 1 prime, what we have is VTH itself because by definition that is the open circuit voltage and here also you see that no current flows through RTH. Now, in this case if you open circuit 1 1 prime all of this IN will flow into RN and the voltage that appears is IN times RN. Okay? And these two have to be equal to each other. Okay? So, IN times RN equals VTH or I n times R t h equals V t h and R n and R t h are the same thing. Okay? So, I hope uh, this is clear as well. So, instead of using a voltage source and resistance in series, you can also use a current source and resistance in parallel as an equivalent to any two terminal circuit which has independent sources and linear elements. Okay? And this uh, idea of using a current source and resistance in parallel is known as Norton's theorem. Just for completeness, let me write out the statement.
RTH and RN are the same and IN is short circuit current between the two terminals. When you short circuit it, that's the current that flows there. Okay. So again, I hope uh, this is clear. So very quickly we will evaluate this. Uh, what would be the Norton equivalent? This has to be represented by a current source IN and a resistance RN in parallel. What will be the value of RN in this case? What is the value of RN? So clearly it's the same as RTH we already calculated. So this is 2.1 kilo ohms. And what's the value of IM? Then again, all of you are able to recognize that it is 10 by 3 milliamps or 3.33 milliamps. You can either get it from the previously calculated uh, Thevenin equivalent circuit. That is, we had 7 volts and 2.1 kilo ohms. And we know that IN times RTH equals VTH. From this you can calculate or even in this case looking at the circuit if you short circuit this what happens is that we have this 10 volts and 3 kilo ohms and a circuit like this no current flows through 7 kilo ohms because it has 0 volts across it and the current that flows this way is 10 volts divided by 3 kilo ohms or 3.33 milliamperes okay so now you can also try it with all these other things added when I added the 10 milliamp etc. Okay, you can figure out what happens. Okay. So that's the story with Norton's theorem and you can prove it in exactly the same way that we uh, proved Thevenin's theorem. To prove Thevenin's theorem what we did was we used the current source here and then use superposition in some way. Now instead of a current source you can use a voltage source like any load can be substituted either by a voltage or a current source. So let's say you substitute with a voltage source here and then you apply superposition and then you can try proving Norton's theorem. Okay. Now earlier there was a question which I think was uh, regarding this circuit saying if there is yet another uh, current source here 3 milliamp what happens? So this is quite simple. This 3 milliamp and 10 milliamp are in parallel. It is like having just a 7 milliamp current pointing downwards. Okay. 
So instead of uh, 10 milliamps, you have 7 milliamps. Now the contribution of uh, the current source, so this was uh, minus 21 volts. So instead of that, it will be in proportion, okay, minus 21 volts times 7 by 10. That's the meaning of linearity, right? So you can calculate how much this is. Uh, this will be minus 14.7 volts, I believe. So instead of adding uh, minus 21 to 7, you have to add minus 14.7 to 7. So the net voltage will be minus 7.7 volts, okay? Is this fine? Any questions? Okay, so now we have discussed the Thevenin's and Norton's theorems. They are very, very useful and they are used very frequently for uh, representing circuits at two terminals. Okay, and this happens all the time. You design some circuit, it's very complicated, but it has two terminals available to the outside world. And uh, what you have to do is to give an equivalent picture to the user, and this will do exactly that. That you will get. Uh, with the Thevenin or not an equivalent circuit, which is very simple, uh, you will get the equivalence of the circuit at those two terminals. Okay, you will not get an internal picture of what is happening, but at those two terminals, the behavior of uh, voltage and current will be equivalent to that of the original circuit. Okay. There is a question on where to use Norton's theorem. I guess uh, the question probably is which one to use, Thevenin or Norton. And that's entirely based on uh, convenience. Okay. Sometimes you use Thevenin's theorem and sometimes you use Norton's theorem. In fact, uh, there is an interesting thing here that uh, we can discuss briefly. So now, like I said, any uh, uh, circuit so there is also another question, what is the proper condition for Thevenin and Norton? I guess uh, what is meant is that what kind of circuits can be represented by Thevenin and Norton? And that I wrote out here. So this is exactly the condition. Any two terminal network with linear elements and independent voltage and current sources. Uh, if you have a circuit that is like this, then it can be represented with either Thevenin or Norton equivalent circuit. Okay, so if you have nonlinear elements, you cannot do this. Okay, and also one thing which I mentioned last week as well that if you do have uh, dependent sources in this, that is okay, but it should be dependent only on quantities inside n. Okay, you cannot have them externally controlled. Now, like I said, any two terminal, uh, any circuit with only two terminals available can be equivalently represented at the two terminals using either Thevenin or Norton equivalent circuit. Okay. So now, let me say this is my circuit. Okay. This is now an extremely simple circuit. I have a voltage source. Okay. Now, what is the Thevenin equivalent of this and what is the Norton equivalent of this? I have only a voltage source. Please try to reason out and answer this question. This is not so much of a, a calculation but reasoning out. I have only a voltage source connected to terminals 1 and 1 prime. Okay. So what's the Thevenin equivalent of this and what's the Norton equivalent of this?
I think that uh, answer for Thevenin equivalent is very clear. It's the same as this circuit, okay? With RTH equal to 0. VTH will be 10 volts and RTH will be 0, okay? But what is the Norton equivalent of the circuit? Yeah, again, I've got some answers saying either uh, uh, the current will be infinite or it doesn't exist. All these are correct. First of all, uh, there is also a question why the RTH of this is zero and that's quite simple. So, in this you have a single independent source and that you set to zero. Okay. So, you make it zero volt which is a short, short circuit and then you look at the one one prime. So, what you see is a zero ohm resistance. Okay. So, RTH equal to 0 for this, that is pretty clear, okay. Now, the Norton equivalent doesn't exist because uh, IN is VTH by RTH and if RTH is exactly 0, if it is non-zero, then you can find it. If RTH is very small, uh, you can find this IN which will become very large. But if RTH is 0, this will tend to infinity, okay. That is, you have an infinite current and across it you will have zero resistance because Rn, which is RTH, is zero. Okay. Now, and this infinite current through the zero resistance can give you some voltage, in this case 10 volts. But this is a really a useless representation. Okay. When you have infinities in the uh, circuit, you can't calculate anything. But I am just uh, uh, making the equivalence here. The way to imagine it is, you imagine some resistance in series with this uh, voltage source and take the limit as it goes to zero, okay? So, my point here is that while in general any circuit can be represented by either Thevenin or Norton, it is possible that one of them doesn't exist, okay? So, one or the other will surely exist, but if you have a pure voltage source between uh, terminals 1 and 1 prime, the Norton equivalent doesn't exist because you cannot short circuit and find the current or in other words if you short circuit if you short circuit it an infinite current will flow okay similarly if you have a pure current source between the terminals one milliamp one and one prime this again the thevenin equivalent doesn't exist and the Norton equivalent is the same as this. It's just a current source. Okay? Now, there are a couple of questions. First of all, uh, if we reverse the case, we can get any voltage. That is exactly the point here. It is indeterminate. Okay, so when you have infinities here, it's indeterminate. Now, the other question is, if you have a voltage source and a current source, do you have a Norton's equivalent? If you have a voltage source and a current source, then uh, in parallel, the result is just a voltage source. Okay, this uh, mentioned a few times before. If you have a voltage source in parallel with anything, okay, whether it's a current source or whatever else, it is the same as the voltage source itself. Okay. Whether you have a current source or uh, not, it doesn't matter. The only thing that, will, that it will change is the current through the voltage source. Otherwise, nothing will change. Okay? So, clearly, if this is a voltage source and there is no legitimate Norton equivalent circuit for this one. Okay? So, I hope that part is clear as well.
So there can be degenerate cases where uh, one or the other equivalent circuit doesn't exist, but uh, one, at least one of them will surely exist. Okay. And again, somebody asked about the application of this theorem. As I said, it is widely applicable. The basic point is to abstract out all the details of a very complicated circuit. You have a very complicated circuit with uh, lots of components. Instead of uh, using all of that in every uh, circuit analysis, if you are interested in the behavior only at two terminals, you can use either the Thevenin or Norton equivalent circuit. Okay. Any other questions? So again, there is some confusion regarding the load. This uh, equivalence is independent of the load. Whatever you load, load you connect to it, the behavior at one and one prime will remain the same as in the original circuit. Okay? So if you want to uh, find the effect of the load on the original circuit, you instead connect the load across the Thevenin equivalent circuit and you will find exactly the same behavior. Okay? So now that we have discussed the Thevenin and Norton theorem, uh, let's move on to another very powerful theorem. Uh, which is which is also used widely. It's mainly used to get uh, more theorems out of uh, I mean of uh, circuit behavior. Okay. Now let's say we have some circuit. I will show arbitrary branches. I don't really care uh, what the branches are. Okay, they can be any elements. And I will number the branches, let's say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And I label the voltage of every branch. V6. And then I will also label the currents consistent with the passive sign convention. I1, I2, I3, I4, I5, and I6. Okay? So now, basically I have a circuit with, I mean this I have shown with six branches, but uh, uh, any, any number of uh, branches is okay, right? So now let's say we compute the sum of power in all the elements, that is sum of VK I K over all branches. What do you think this is going to be? I mean, please give me a guess. Actually, there are many people who are still asking questions. I will deal with them soon after I deal with this particular thing. That is, in this particular case, I sum the power in all the branches. V1, I1 plus V2, I2 plus V3, I3 plus up to V6, I6. What is it going to be?
Now it turns out that this number will be 0. Okay. And this is known as conservation of power. Okay. Now uh, this conservation of power, what it means is that if you have a circuit and if uh, some sources are dissipating power and some others will be generating power. Okay. Whatever power is dissipated has to be generated in some part of the circuit. Okay. So there is no other external source of power. Right. So we have only electrical variables here and electrical connections between elements. So whatever power is generated in some elements will be dissipated in other elements or whatever power is dissipated in certain elements has to be generated in some other elements of the same circuit. Okay. So that is what this statement means uh, that power is conserved in a circuit. Okay. Now this also can be proved and this can be proved basically using only Kirchhoff's voltage law and Kirchhoff's current law. Okay. Now this is completely unrelated to what kind of elements we have. It could be linear, nonlinear, or whatever. But uh, as long as our elements obey KVL and KCL, which is basically a fundamental property of the circuit, uh, this uh, conservation of power holds good. Okay. So in fact, I would uh, strongly encourage you to try and prove this using only KVL and KCL. Okay. And I will give you a hint. So let me not name them N12. Uh, I will label these nodes N, N0, which is the reference node. You can consider this to be the reference node. It doesn't matter which one it is. And NA, node NA, node NB, and node NC. Okay. So you can try to prove this by uh, making these products VK, IK, that is V1, I1, V2, I2, etc. And this V1, I1, uh, V1, V2, and so on are the branch voltages. Okay. Now you try to represent these branch voltages in terms of the node voltages. That is VA, VB, VC with respect to the reference node. Okay. And then you group all the terms containing VA and VB and VC together. And then you uh, use Kirchhoff's current law. You will be able to prove this. Okay. So please take it as an exercise and do that. Hopefully you will be able to do it. Otherwise we will uh, discuss it later. So for this you have to represent branch voltages in terms of node voltages and group the coefficients of each node voltage and then you will be able to pretty much immediately see the answer. Okay. So I will stop with this discussion here. I uh, will continue with this in the next uh, lecture. But there were a few questions regarding uh, Thevenin's uh, Thevenin equivalent circuit. The first one is, what do we do when we have dependent sources? Now, dependent sources you find uh, find it in exactly the same way as we did with resistors. Okay. Now, with resistors, what we did was to use the resistor formula to calculate the resistance. But in general, if you have any network with two terminals, let's say one and one prime, the way to find the resistance looking into one and one prime is to apply a test voltage. We test and analyze the circuit. In case of Thevenin's theorem, whatever is inside will be nulled. All the independent sources will be nulled. And you find I test. Now, because you have a single independent source V test, the I test will be proportional to V test. So, the Thevenin equivalent circuit will be Thevenin uh, resistance, sorry, will be V test by. I test. Okay. 
Now this is true whether you have dependent sources or not. Now when you have resistors only, sometimes you may be able to use the formula for series or parallel combination of resistors. But in general, even with resistors, this is the method to use. Okay. So let me uh, take a very simple example again. This is a voltage controlled current source whose value is, let me call this Vy and the value of this is Vy divided by 2 kilo ohms or basically 0.5 milli Siemens times Vy. Okay. Let's say this is 10 volts. So, how would you go about doing this? You have to find the open circuit voltage, which of course you do by uh, in the normal way, 1 1 prime. You do circuit analysis to find out the voltage across this. Okay? And you have to also find the feminine resistance. For that, you set the 10 volt to 0, so that becomes a short circuit. We have 5 kilo ohms here. and we have Vy and this all these things will remain exactly the same okay you don't change anything in the dependent source then you apply this V test and find I test the ratio of the two will give you RDH looking into this now this is a very simple circuit but whatever arbitrary connection of uh, dependent sources you have, you can still follow exactly the same procedure. Okay? I hope this is clear. So the procedure is exactly the same. You have to find the resistance between 1 and 1 prime. If you are given a black box, let's say in the lab, and asked to find out the resistance between 1 and 1 prime, what will you do? You will apply some voltage across 1 and 1 prime, find the current that flows through it, take the ratio, or you force a current uh, from uh, 1 point to 1 or see the voltage that is developed across it and take the ratio okay so that's that's how you do it for any circuit now it just happens that if you have only resistors you may be able to take some shortcuts okay Now the other question was, somebody said, how do we give the direction? I am not sure what is meant by this. Uh, maybe what is meant is the direction of the uh, direction of the current source. Okay, so when you find the not an equivalent circuit, you will short circuit the uh, output from 1 to 1 prime. And you measure the current flowing from 1 to 1 prime. Okay, so that gives you the direction, right? So if the current is actually flowing from 1 to 1 prime, then inside you will have a current source like this. Okay. If in the short circuit current is flowing that way, then inside I n will be like that. If it's in opposite direction, then I n will also be in the opposite direction. Okay, so there is no confusion here. Now another question is can source transformation be applied if the network contains nonlinear elements? Now, like I said before, the part that you are transforming has to contain linear elements. So what I mean by this is the following. So I have taken the example of this network N with independent sources and linear elements. And linear elements includes the resistance, I mean resistances and controlled sources. The only condition that the control sources have to be controlled by something inside N, some branch voltage or branch current. Okay. And you have 1, 1 prime. Now, the part that you are transforming, this has to be linear. 
Now, if you have nonlinear elements elsewhere in the circuit, something like this, then that's okay. This will uh, not. This is not what you are transforming. So, whatever I have shown inside the red box, that is linear, and that can be represented by this uh, Thevenin or Morton equivalent circuit. And the source transformation means that you either uh, represent. I mean, you go from voltage to current source representation, which means that that is also applicable only to linear circuits. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, so if there are no more questions, please uh, uh, try to do some of the things that are indicated. That is, trying to prove the Norton's representation that it is valid for any circuit. That's one thing we can do, and you can follow the lines of uh, what we did for the Thevenin representation, and you can also try to do the other one, uh, that is, try to prove conservation of power for any circuit uh, using uh, KCL and KVL. Okay. Okay, there is another question. Again, I'm not clear of uh, what this question is. It says across a single element, if there are two voltage sources of same magnitude, superposition fails in finding the current in the resistor. The question is, are there voltage sources in series? Is that what is meant here? Now, see, if you have two voltage sources of same value in parallel, okay, now this is the same as a single voltage source. So, that is one thing. Now, if you insist on using superposition, you will get a degenerate answer. Because if this is V and this is V, and you have to set this to 0, then you have to short circuit it. Okay, so you'll have infinite current here and some voltage across the resistor and so on. Okay, so this is basically a degenerate condition and uh, you can't uh, represent uh, things like this. Okay. <coughs> 